There's Fred. Is it? Fred. Hey, Fred. How are you, man? How's it going? Yeah? Yes. Your butcher has hit. I have brought you a chicken. May God bless you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, for you. Thank you. I've named him Adolf. Yeah. He's a good chicken, but uh, I'd keep an eye on him. Yeah. The last time I let an Adolf do whatever he wanted, things got kind of out of hand. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. If I was to tell you that this is a documentary about helping kids in Africa, I don't think you'd believe me. But to make a long story short, in 2010, I went to Uganda to visit my sponsor child, Irene, and to get to know the people and to see if there was any way we could help out. Now, five years later, I wanted to go back to see how things were going and to see if anything's changed. To get a different perspective on the matter, I decided to bring with me two of my best friends, comedian Dex Carrington and photographer Anthony Hughes. Our mission? To make a 30-second ad focusing on helping kids in Africa. So this is the story about the making of those 30 seconds. That being said, this is not supposed to be a story about us. However, I do feel the need to take a moment to give you a little heads up about my good friend Dex. You see, he's, well, he's different. First of all, he's the funniest guy I know. He's got a big heart, but he's never been into kids. I asked my parents when I was five, why did you want to have me? It's just this huge inconvenience for you. Why would anybody want a kid? And they're like, oh, because we love you and this and that. And although he sees things from a different perspective than myself, and I have to admit, he always seems to make sense. It's a good looking goat. Which is why I wanted him along for this adventure in the first place. Whether he makes any sense at all, well, I'll let you be the judge of that. And so the journey begins. Holy shit. This is unbelievable. All right, so you're standing over here. Yeah, really? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm thinking like... Uh, Where am I standing? Yeah, you know what? You stand there and then you come in. Like you are right now. So, dude, we're here to make 30 seconds of advertising. Yeah. To get people to help out down here. And the thing is, I've always been so skeptical to stuff like this. Like, oh, help sponsor a child in Africa. So then I thought about what was the one thing that made me come down here? And that was when you basically said, I asked you, is it dangerous in Uganda? And you said, who cares? If you die there, you'll be the guy who died helping kids in Africa. And then I thought, yeah, it sounds pretty good. People will think I'm pretty great. So it's pretty much a selfish reason that brought me down here. Here's the thing, the very bedrock of our economic system is based on selfishness. So what we should do is we should give people selfish reasons why they should help out down here. Because what do they need down here? They need basic needs. They need food, they need health, they need education. And what do people want in the West? They want to feel awesome, look awesome, and you know, be perceived as awesome. I feel that if we do this, then we're genuinely embracing the reality of the situation. If anyone's going to come to me and say, hey, that's not true, I'm not selfish. Really? Would you share your apartment with a family of Syrian refugees? I wouldn't. So what, uh, what exactly are we doing here? Since we're trying to figure out what we're trying to do, then I thought first it'd be cool to understand what it is we're actually dealing with. All right, let's do it. Let's dive into the Olympic-sized swimming pool that is Uganda. In this case, the slum of Kampala. Right, the deep end. Yeah. Yeah. So while we make our way further into the slums of Kampala, then I thought for a moment it would be nice to give you a brief introduction to Uganda in a segment called A Brief Introduction to Uganda. So Uganda is right about here. Their flag, which happens to have a chicken-looking bird on it, looks like this. This is your typical Ugandan middle-class family with mother, father, and a whole bunch of children. This is how they make food, and this is what it looks like when it's done. And here is where they live, all nine of them, 
and this is where they shower. Here's a typical Ugandan tree. Here's a wheelchair, a shoe store, a typical bull. This is where they get their water, and here's how they bring it home. This is how women greet men. And if you're lucky enough to afford school, then this is what your classroom will look like. If you want to go to the movies, then you go here to check out the latest films from Hollywood. Or if you're one of the very few who happen to have a TV and a DVD player, you could always rent some classics here. And last but not least, if you ask a local what the situation in Uganda is these days, he'll say, It's peaceful, welcoming, and entertaining. With a big smile. Which along with laughter is the Ugandan way, because they believe that keeping things positive is super important, especially since life is tough enough as it is. Which coincidentally fits in pretty nicely with Dex's thoughts about this documentary. Another thing that I've noticed is when you see stuff about, uh, you know, people that don't have water and, and, and health and education, there's always an undertone of sadness and guilt. I don't want this to be, I want this to be the complete opposite of that. I want it to be based on joy and inspiration. Really get in there. I don't care if people sponsor kids or not, but at least join this journey. You know what I'm saying? To get some perspective on your own life. Because I'm here in the capacity of, you know, of an investigative reporter backslash marketer who's going to make the best 30 seconds of inspiring television that has ever existed. Basically, it's Mission Impossible. Is it impossible? <laughs> For most people, probably. Which is again why I brought along Dex. I would also like to mention here that I have a secret mission to see if I can get him to feel something on this journey. Because as you've probably guessed, he's not exactly the emotional type. Hey, uh, how, how are you with kids? Oh, really awkward. I talk to them like they're adults. Okay. Yeah, I can't do that baby talk shit. What really bothers me is when people talk to kids as if they're kids, it stunts their development even more, I find. Anyway, that was the only time I killed a man in a bar fight. It was in Minnesota, and I'll be honest, I just ran. I never heard from the police, and I'm not exactly about to give them a call, if you know what I mean. But if you meet an eight-year-old and you go, come on, let's talk about corporate tax rates, all right, then you really get his brain going. That's true. All right, let's go see these kids. Cool. So my plan is that if I can get this guy to feel something for these kids, well, then there's my 30 seconds right there, which leads us back to the slums where pretty much anybody would get emotional. This is my friend Dex. How you doing? Dex. Uh, you want to come on in here? Uh, interesting. Nice. Um, the air in here is a little bit. Kind of. The water. The water. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Yeah, it's probably, yeah. yeah. I wonder how, how it is to breathe this all the time, you know? Yeah. Five people. Yeah. They're in there. Five. This is pretty powerful stuff. Do you feel comfortable here? Well, everyone's super nice. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. what are you thinking? When I was in that area, I was torn between two worlds. On the one hand, you someone shows you their house. You want to be polite. You want to say thank you very much. You want to say it's nice here. On the other hand, there's a camera there with viewers who need to understand that this is not good, right? At one point, I said thank you for inviting me into your home. And then I said fantastic, which is like unenthusiastically. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Yeah, for letting me see your home. Yeah. Thank you. It's fantastic. Which is a weird thing to say. Which is that it just came out. Because there's just so much to take in. When you think about it, it's really grim, but on the lightness, you got all these kids there smiling. And, and that, that really lightens it up kind of thing, you know? Yeah. 
I wonder how easy it is to stay positive in that situation down there. It's pretty surreal, eh? It's really surreal. So it's just incredible that all my friends in the West, they go, oh, there's no way I could, I could sponsor a child because I, I'm so broke right now. Like, I'm so broke right now. And they're literally sitting in a heated apartment in a silk robe, drinking a cafe latte, ordering jeans off forever21.com. I'm so broke right now. Like, I'm so broke. Literally, you could drop two Frappuccinos and these people could have a whole new life. That's just mind bending. So yeah, the whole point here is how do you get people to understand that it takes so little to change so many lives and do so much good, right? Yeah. That is the question, right? Yeah. So, this 30, second, uh, this 30 second ad, I've got some thoughts and I'll go into those a bit later. Am I right? Yes. He gets it. You know, if you're like most people and you're on Instagram and Twitter and all that other shit about 10 times a day and you're continuously comparing yourself to other people and you're depressed as a result, boy do I have some news for you. If you sponsor a kid in Africa, every month you get a bill that reminds you that someone has it worse than you. Or if you're actually a genuinely caring person who wants to give, that's a totally different story. But focus on the Instagramming. Oh, and by the way, save some lives. But the Instagramming. Here's the thing. The selfish reasons, I understand that. But at the end of the day, I just think that, you know, when you see how tough it is for these people, how hard, how, how much they need our help, how, it, how we shouldn't have to come up with selfish reasons to make this thing work. It should be from the bottom of our hearts we should know that this is the right thing to do because they deserve it. You know this, I know this, and I just think that that's something that we should all bear in mind that this is, it's our responsibility to, to do something about this. If we're ever going to make this world a better place, that's where we got to start, helping others. What are you doing? I'm talking about the situation. Are you trying to get kids sponsored or promote the suicide hotline? What do you mean? That was depressing and sad and non-inspirational. It's the opposite of what we're trying to do. But it's selfish reasons. Inspirational. Intense. Do you want to get the girl of your dreams? Boy, do I have some news for you. Sponsor a kid in Africa. Then you invite her over for dinner, you got the wine, you got the meal. Then you happen to leave a letter from your sponsor child on the table. She goes, oh my God, what's that? You go, oh, that's so embarrassing. I can't believe I left that there. That's just a letter from the child in Africa whose life I saved. No big deal. Foreign aid? More like getting laid. <laughs> See, the whole you should help, it's been done before. Yeah. We want to go into uncharted territory. Let's continue this conversation over lunch, shall we? Let's do that. Excellent. Good times. Hey, hey dude. Bongo. Yeah, right? Bongo. Bongo, brother. So the slums may have inspired Dex on his 30-second selfish reasons, but for a man who's talking about lunch after that experience, well, let's just say that my hopes on his emotional reaction were going to have to wait a little longer. Luckily, I had a plan on where to find them, which meant that it was time to head out of the city and go see a little girl named Irene. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> bonga. 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 Sure. Hey, what does bonga mean? Bonga is so peace and love. Nice. From the hat. Cool, man. Yeah. Bonga. Ooh, with the twist. Yeah, then I'm not. Lock it down. <laughs> That's it. Ah. Uh, Buckle up for safety. Right. <laughs> what I always like to do is I'm sitting in the car, someone gets in my car, and then I go, I've had a few drinks, you might want to buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> the beautiful thing about being on a trip like this, where very little is planned, means that one becomes more open to new experiences, which again can often serve as a valuable life lesson in disguise. So on our way to see Irene, it was no surprise that I would be reminded of one of life's most important lessons, which leads us into a little side segment called Karma. So these white ants, yeah. they eat them. Yeah, they eat them. 
What do you think? Curious? What do you mean? Are you curious to try one? No. It's not exactly a pickup line. You know, I ate an ant once, so. Maybe not in that sense, but amongst the guys, you'd probably get some cred. Really? For eating an ant? I think so. Omani ped me home. Omani ped me home. It doesn't really taste anything. I feel guilty killing them. But then again, this is food, but it was curiosity. So what do I do? Do I have one more? What? What do I do? Do I have one more? <laughs> no, I don't know if I want to take a life just for curiosity's sake. You know, I eat because I'm hungry to get food. What about the chicken today? Yeah, that was lunch. You know, I gotta be honest, they look delicious. But some we just had some, lunch. Some, <laughs> some people sprinkle salt on it and water and... Yeah, but I can't eat between meals. That's the main concern. <laughs> That's the main excuse. <laughs> I really regret not eating that flying ant. You didn't eat that ant, huh? No, but it was between meals and so I can't. Otherwise, I would have been eating a whole bunch of ants. You and me, and me and you, together we're so happy, huh? Oh wow, look at this. Look at this. Oh, dude. I don't think you've seen a colony of ants until you've seen this. Oh, all right, they're all over my shoes. Oh, they're all over mine too. Hey, are these the biting kind? Oh, Not even close. <laughs> it's real emotions. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck's going on? Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yes. Are you kidding? You're not filming this, are you? Yes. God damn it. But seriously, I still think there's one in my fucking asshole. And that, my friends, is karma. What you give is what you get. Anyway, back to the mission. Which means that it's time to finally meet Irene. Oh, and... You know how we said that this would just be good vibes? Well, we lied. So to give you a better understanding of who this little girl is and what she means to me, not to mention why I think she might evoke some feelings in Dex, then for a moment we have to go back in time to one of the more powerful experiences of my life. It was in the fall of 2010 and I was looking forward to spending a day with my sponsor child Irene and her family to experience how they live. Curious to learn more about them, I started by asking the mother some questions, only to find out that her husband had passed away the year before and one of her other daughters died just a few months ago, which is when I realized that perhaps asking questions was not such a good idea. The vibe was intense, and to be honest, I almost freaked out. It's one thing to see a sad story on the news, but suddenly I was in the middle of one. Luckily, I had Sam with me, and together we decided that perhaps the best thing we could do was to just have some fun with the kids for the day with whatever we had. What do you think? It's a nice ball. So we made a football, warmed up, chose teams, and scored some goals. Then we took the kids for their first car ride before we had a jam and mocked around with the camera. <laughs> Emma even made a little Cribs episode, which was hilarious. The day turned out to be a great success, full of joy and laughter. But then when it was over and time to leave, that's when the smiles faded and I felt that vibe coming back. It was reality. And the fact that this family deserved so much better that reminded me of just how unfair this world can be. And these kids especially shouldn't have to deal with such harsh realities at an early age. So as you can imagine, it gave me some serious perspective on my own life and how extremely lucky I was to even have opportunities. Before I left, I made a promise to continue to give my support and to one day come back. I've kept the first promise and today I was about to fulfill the second. So naturally, I was very excited to see them again and to hear how things were going. We are now going to see Irene. Yeah, and you were just telling me under the tree before it started raining that the family is doing pretty well. Yes. Well, you said fair. 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 Yeah. And uh, fair, what exactly does fair mean? 
uh, what I mean here is uh, is that the situation uh, has changed. Okay. From the previous, wh while you're here, yep. to now the new state where they have at least some goats, they have some pigs. They have goats and pigs? Yes. And no way. That That's is awesome. Holy shit, it's this guy. Oh. Hey, how are you, brother? Hey. Wow. I brought you a football. Thank you. Thank no worries, man. How's your sister? How's Irene? How's Irene? She's How's in the Irene? home. Yeah. That's awesome. Should we go see her? Hey, so Emma, do you remember me? I remember you. Yeah? Mm. It's been a long time since I saw you, huh? Yes. You've grown a lot. Mm. You're the big boy now. <laughs> Are you strong? Let me see your muscle. I'm strong. Let me see your muscle, man. Give me. <laughs> nice, man. He is strong. Oh, wow. Look at this. This place is still as beautiful as I remember. Hello. Mm. Nice to see you again. Mm. Amazing. Mm. You look amazing. Mm. I'm so glad that you found a, a, a nice, good man here mm. with you. Mm. Oh, wow. Yes, Irene, look at you. <laughs> You're so big now, huh? Wow. And you, huh? Can you tell her that I was here five years ago? Where's uh, Emma? Emma, brother. I was wondering, you know last time when you showed me the place? Mm. Can you show me now the place again? You have a new hut. This one. Yes. This is the Nkoko food. Oh, wow. You know what? I'm going to set up. Don't be afraid, Nkoko. Oh. Hey. Can I go inside with shoes or is that bad? No. No? Yeah, Sorry, man. It's just I got all this mud. Uh, come on and check it. Yeah? Oh, wow. Look at this place. All right. Let's have a seat. Draw me. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Damn. Wow. It's nice, huh? It's nice. So you're a grown boy, man. Now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> long time. Long time, man. Have you ever woken up with a hangover so bad where you did something stupid the night before and you have so much anxiety that you just want to die and you say to yourself, I'm never drinking again? Well, hey, do I have some news for you. If you sponsor a kid in Africa, then every time you wake up with a hangover, you look at that picture and it's a confirmation that you're a good person and you have nothing to worry about. So, no reason to stop drinking or stop doing stupid stuff. Basically, when you sponsor a kid, you have a license to be a retard. In other words, get yourself a retard card today. Nice. I couldn't be happier with the way that went. I don't, ah, I don't hello, care. Irene. Wow. You want to come sit with us? <laughs> I'm very grateful for this experience. To come here and meet you guys and see you that you're a big man. Mm. I'm proud of you, man. I'm glad that you're still going to school and that you want to be a mechanic and all yes. these things. It's important. Mm. I just want to say that I, I think it's amazing the job she's done. Yes. And I'm very happy that her children are so healthy and that she's yes. found a new man. Yes. Mm. Mm. Well, we gotta go and we'll see you again tomorrow, yeah? Thank you again so much. All right. That was... Hard to explain. I don't know. It's just uh, surreal. Because, you know, when you're sitting in 
another country far, far away and you get your letter from plan that shows like this is your kid, she's doing all right. Then you like to think that, ah, oh, you know, everything's cool. And... and it's like Joel was saying, it's fair. I don't think fair is the word either because it's not really fair. It's not fair at all. It's far from fair, but in the sense where it could have been a lot worse down here, I find that pretty interesting since, you know, it could be worse. You'd think, how could it be worse? They don't really have anything. They don't have electricity. But they have their health. They have their smiles. I don't know. The whole thing's just a bit... I don't know. Good work, Fred. This whole thank world you. No, thank you, man. Really. Home, You're doing a good job, man. Thank you. Sure. No, I've done the best. I haven't done, the, I haven't done anything. I give I've a little bit a of money each month, so you guys do the work here, you know? But uh, without that, it would be impossible. To reach here. Dude, let's go further toward the car. It's getting dark soon, man. Yeah, we, can do it on this, we can do it on the road. I don't understand how you're not overwhelmed with joy by the fact that she found a guy and there's a well and everything is looking up. I guess it's the comparison, you know? But baby steps. No, you're right. It's not like they're going to move into a mansion tomorrow. So besides my emotional roller coaster, I was still nowhere near Dex having a breakthrough, which had my 30 seconds looking pretty grim. Then again, I was really happy to see that Irene and her family were doing so well. So for the rest of that evening, I put aside my secret mission and fell to rest knowing that right now, that's all that really mattered. We're doing an interview. God damn it. Right, dude. Cows. Dude, right here. Am I sunburned? Look at it. A little bit. Am I? Not really. Am I a little burned? A little bit. Dude, we're in Africa. There's like, the sun here is crazy. Is it? Yeah. What do you mean? It's the same sun that's everywhere else. No, but it's a latitude altitude. We're very close to the equator. It's a latitude altitude. We're very close. That's not an explanation. <laughs> no, is it? No? <laughs> I thought it was. I thought I made myself clear earlier. It's that an there's... altitude longitude thing. Longitude. Is it longitude? I don't know. I don't know either. Shit, am I sunburned? Probably. Not yet. Huh? Probably. What do you mean? I put on lotion yeah. or sunscreen. Okay, Very. Sam. Let's roll. As the next day progressed, and we were walking through the luscious fields of the Ugandan countryside, I wondered why my good friend Dex was so reluctant to getting in touch with his emotions. And then I remembered what a wise man once told me about that very subject. He said that if you break down human behavior to its simplest form, then everything we do in life either comes from love or fear. So all the good we create in our lives comes from love and whatever holds us back comes from fear. You always fear what you don't know. So I wondered, what was he afraid of? Why are you making me go towards the cow? Because I want the shop, man. What do you mean? Stop Fine. being afraid of a cow. It's a bull. 
It's not a bull. Yes, and it's got fucking horns, it's man. It's a calf, man. So what? Why do we need to risk it? We're in the middle of nowhere with no medical care. You want me to go close to an animal with horns? What the hell is it? Why, 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 why? Well, hello there. You know, if you happen to be unemployed, I've got a solution for you. Sponsor a child in Africa. Because when you're unemployed, you go to a party, people say, what do you do for a living? You have to say stuff like, oh, well, I'm in between things. It's totally lame. But if you sponsor a kid in Africa, you go to a party, people go, what do you do for a living? You go, no big deal, but I save the lives of children in Africa. It's boring, but it's part of my life. It's just how I roll. Now you're bathing in chicks and everything's being awesome. Wait, you can also be a chick and be unemployed. Then you're bathing in dudes, hot ones like Chippendales. Like Magic Mike style. So whatever was holding Dex back, at least he was on fire with his 30 second selfish reason pitch. And in regards to my 30 seconds, then I figure since neither the slums or Irene had had any visible effect on my good friend's emotional sides, then I guess my secret mission was going to have to wait for some other time. Little did I know, however, that the next day Fred and a chicken would change all of that. Thank you for the heart God gave you. You give me the chicken? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You think they'll let me take this on the plane? Probably not. Yeah, right, because of society, right? <laughs> Stupid rules. Who's this guy? Okay, so Fred is uh, one of the first families that I visited the last time I was here. It was him and his daughter Esther, which is actually a sponsored kid through Plan. And she, uh, I walked with her to school and we hung out and, hello. And a long story short, it was great to see them again. And besides the heartwarming hey. reunion. Hey, Hello. how are you? Welcome. So nice to see you. I told you I'd be back. I'm very glad to I'm see I'm so you. glad to see you as well. Oh, this is my come. friend Dex. Hey, oh, <laughs> oh, Freddy. Oh, no, oh wow. No, 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 no. Followed by the mandatory miscommunication. Yeah. What kind of course do you want to do? Nothing. The what? Nothing. 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 No nursing. I'm like nothing. Nothing. Which wasn't even that funny. Then there isn't really that much to tell about the rest of that day, relevant to the story anyway, other than the fact that before we left, Fred gave Dex the chicken, and after that, things got pretty weird. Okay, so um, plan for today is pick up the solar. And a chicken. A chicken? Yeah. You should give Fred a chicken. You want to give him a chicken? Yeah. Oh, nice. You think you want a girl or a boy chicken? Fe mm, like, female is better, yeah? Eggs and stuff. Uh, want a male have sex with the other chickens and make more chickens? Yes, yeah, so a male, I think, is better. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, it is a good chicken. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, they're looking good. Well, yeah. looking good. I think, uh, I think it's a pretty good looking accessory, you know? Yes. Some people have a watch, some people have cool clothing. I got a chicken. Yes. Ha, bonga. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. All right, we're there. You see, you could choose between Sennheiser or Röder. But then again, Sennheiser being German, you know that Germans know their stuff when it comes to technology. Yeah which was a little bit unfortunate from 39 to 45, but other than that, it was good. So anyway, it turns out that Fanta is pretty much Nazi Coca-Cola because Coca-Cola couldn't operate in Germany during the war, so they made Fanta, right? Is that true? Yeah. Really? Yeah, if you're drinking Fanta, you're drinking Nazi juice. You know, you are one lucky chicken. You're out of a cage now, you go into the countryside, you get to have sex with all the hens out there. Well, he's really giving me an evil look here. Why is he giving you an evil look? Wherever I turn, he's looking at me. He's like the Mona Lisa, but in chicken mode. He's kind of evil looking. Wow. All right. That's crazy. So why'd you decide to get Fred a chicken? Because he gave me a chicken. Ha! <laughs> he thinks he can give me a chicken without there being consequences? Think again. All right, so this is like a revenge gift? Yeah. All right. I always want to be the last gifter. Hey, have you thought of a name for the chicken? Uh, yeah. I've decided to call him Adolf. Whoa. Is that a bit inappropriate? 
No, not at all. He's a big cock and he's about to fuck everybody. <laughs> hey, Fred. How are you, man? <laughs> How's it going? Hey, you're a little cock. Yeah? yeah. Yes. Your, your butt is hot head. I have brought you a chicken. May God bless you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, for you. Thank you. I've named him Adolf. Yeah. He's a good chicken, but uh, I'd keep an eye on him. Yeah. The last time they let an Adolf do whatever he wanted, things got kind of out of hand. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Brother Dexy. Yeah. He has loved me, he has offered me this hand. Lily, I'm saying where he has got, may God bless him so much. Oh, wow. Yeah. You hear that? God's yes. blessing, yeah. bro. Yes, God's yeah. blessing. I can oh. feel it. Yeah, it feels good. <laughs> and I have a I feeling. feel the power. Yeah. Now, whether it was the feathers or simply the fact that someone who had nothing would be so generous, I will never know. But one thing's for sure, after that day, there was something very different about Dex. And so as we watched Dex slowly joining in on a traditional Ugandan game of jump squares, I would like you to notice how for the first time on this trip, it looks like he's genuinely enjoying himself. I have to say, it feels amazing. I mean, look at him. It's beautiful. In fact, the next couple of days, it seemed as if Dex couldn't get enough of hanging out with children. So anyway, I've been dating this girl for like three months, and for some reason, she thinks we're in a relationship. I mean, what the hell is that about? Watch again. Right? Go like this, rub it, put it in there. <gasps> Women be crazy. <laughs> Bonga. Great listeners, these kids. I feel like I'm really able to vent. But if I go in here... Yeah. Oh! So, I mean, real happiness is always arrived at in the immediate moment. I mean, planning is a good thing, but there's no point in planning for a future so that when you get there, you'll be in another future, right? So we're always living for some other moment than the moment we're in. And this right here is a good moment. Yeah? <laughs> It was almost as if he had finally surrendered his rational shield, leaving his heart open to embrace the pure love of the very children he was here to help. If I take four, plus four, what is that? Eight. Yes! And I guess now would be a good time to explain to you why it was so important for me to get my good friend to open up to those emotions. You see, the reason I wanted Dex to feel what it's like to connect with another human being on a deeper level is because I believe that once you feel that connection, then you experience something that is much greater than any selfish reason. And it can't be explained because it's a feeling. Listen up. And it's that feeling that if we dare open up to it, it can make a world of difference in not only our own lives, but especially in this case, the lives of others. And love is not just a feeling of joy and laughter. It entails a feeling of compassion and empathy as well. In other words, if you're happy, then I'm happy. But if you suffer, then that means that I suffer too. And in a world where the two biggest challenges we face are hunger and obesity, which is a fact and completely absurd, by the way, the one solution might surely be that those who have more can perhaps share a little with those who have less. Which is again why I believe that Dex's personal journey can serve as an inspiration to us all. Because if those who do have more lend a helping hand, then perhaps the world can go from looking like this to feeling a little bit more like... It's pretty okay. awesome, eh? The energy is Oh, just... it's so awesome. It's the best trip I've been on my whole life. Really? Yeah, undoubtedly. Because it's just amazing to meet so many great people. Yeah. Makes you think about stuff, eh? It does. They have so little, yet they're so happy. Which is a great question. Do things make you happy? Do possessions make you happy? I think the proof is right here. Answer's no. I'm definitely going to sponsor like three, four kids. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Hell, yeah. It's not like they find one kid and then give him tons of, tons of money and then he becomes like, you know, a hero, you know, in the community. It's no. like, you know, they're building wells, setting up health stations. It gets spread out throughout, you know, throughout the entire community. So an entire group of kids like this can have a better life. Like in there right now, they want to set up a better school, yeah. right? 
and it takes a microscopic amount of money to help so many kids, which is what I really love about it. You know? Yeah. That's the thing. Hey, can I ask you a question? Please do. Could you see yourself having kids after this experience? Oh, no, not me personally, because it doesn't fit my life at all. And it's not something I want, but I want to help, help these kids. Yeah. To put it this way, there's enough, there's, enough, there's enough kids that need help. Why would I want to produce another one? Why don't, we, why don't we help these first? Yeah. And that's my 30 seconds right there. And so it's time to wrap up this documentary in a final good vibe montage. Selfish reasons. What do you think? I think it's okay as long as you're helping someone. You are doing it as a personal thing, but someone is benefiting out of it. And you never know the person who is benefiting in it is helping another one. For you, you will think you are helping only this one, but that help is going to another person also. And people shouldn't be embarrassed if they have personal reasons? They shouldn't be embarrassed. The whole issue is about helping. <laughs> oh, and last but not least, this documentary is dedicated to all the amazing people in Uganda, not to mention all the great organizations that help make the world a better place. We want to thank you all so much for watching. We hope you have a beautiful day. Oh, and there is, of course, one last thing. I'm part of the problem. I'm a selfish person, right? I want self-realization. I enjoy a good old-fashioned selfie, right? And let's be honest, after I've been down here to Uganda, I haven't posted anything on Instagram while I've been here, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna. I like the idea of people thinking I'm a nice guy. I like the idea of people thinking I'm an interesting guy who travels, you know, and, 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 and who's out there in the world doing stuff and is achieving things. That gives me pleasure for some reason, right? And throughout my 20s, I've pretty much had everything, but I haven't been willing to part with anything. Down here, we met Fred. He has nothing. He offered me a chicken. He offered you a piece of land and he offered Tony his daughter. He's got nothing, and he's willing to give everything. We have everything, and we're not willing to give anything. Now, I'm not generalizing an entire population, and a lot of the Western countries give a lot of foreign aid, and I think a lot of people kind of hide behind that. Well, my country donates, so why should I? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, and put this in the final episode, because this is the ultimate selfish reason. Go for it. Ah. Uh, Uganda, daybreak. Well, hello there. Did you know that it's scientifically proven through clinical studies that nothing increases your happiness like helping other people? So invest in your own personal well-being and happiness today by sponsoring a child in Africa. Sure, tens of thousands of lives will be improved drastically and the world as a whole will be a better place, but don't think about that. Think about yourself and your own personal well-being. Nice. Yeah. 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 Pretty good, huh? I think we got it. Yeah. We started with the shot in the beginning of the series. Since this is the last one, we should end by kind of walking off. OK. Where are we going? No, we were just walking off for the shot. It looked good, you know? But the car's over there. Yeah, but this looks better. What do you, how would it look better walking away from the car? Well, you know how sometimes you end things and it's kind of like the two guys walking off from the distance? Yeah, it would make sense if we started this walk by saying, all right, now let's walk off to Kamuli. No. But we're not. No, I know. We're, this is just for the shot, so we should just kind of head up this hill and... You know, those movies don't make any sense anyway. You know, like when the... Like in, like, like in a romantic comedy when the couple kisses and then they just walk into the distance. Where the hell are they going? That's a good point. Yeah, you tell me. Should we be holding hands? No. Why not? What the hell is wrong with you? Tony, I think we should hold hands, don't you think?
Hey, dude, today when you name that chicken Adolf, don't you think people might be offended? People be offended? The only one who should be offended is the chicken.